What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage and we're getting back on the candy cart. Today we're going to get everything done so we can go test drive it. First off, on the last episode you've seen us uh, get the CVs done, get the fuel tanks mounted. These are Go Power Sports 150 fuel tanks. We only have one right now. We're waiting on the other one to come in the mail so we can have dual saddlebags. One's like a reserve. Um, so to get the fuel from this tank, we was going to use a pulse pump, just your standard pulse pump um, that you can get from like Go Power Sports, these little boys. Uh, but I did not want to rely on vacuum pressure to run this. So I decided to go with this Edelbrock low pressure, high volume fuel pump. This is for carbureted engines. You can get these in a couple different PSIs. This particular one does two and a half to four PSI, which is plenty. We just need to get the fuel to the carburetor. But we are running a 20 or a 34 millimeter Makuni from Go Power Sports, which looks like this right here. And we're going to show you how to prepare it for fuel pressure because these are made out of the box for gravity fed so we'll throw you on tripod show you what you have to do to a Makuni to get it ready for a fuel pump all right so this is the 34 millimeter Makuni from go power sports this is a true Makuni they are a Makuni dealer you can buy some of their carbs in the like the chinese knockoff versions they do allow you to be able to buy both so it's pretty cool but in the 34s they only sell the true Makunis so uh, the needle and seat in this is set up for gravity fed. So if you was to put a pulse pump or like we're doing the electric fuel pump, what you're gonna do is overpower the seat and it's gonna push fuel out the overflows. There's two overflows, there's this one down here and there's also this one up here. It can push fuel up inside uh, the carb and make your go-kart high idle and stuff. So we don't want that. So in the links down below, you can find a 1.5 millimeter needle and seat. I think factory it's a 3.3 or a 3.5 all we have to do is swap out this needle and seat and we'll be able to run fuel pressure so we just got four phillip head screws so on a 34 millimeter Makuni, these are a lot different than other Makunis. the floats actually sit down in the bowl so if we pull the bowl off these floats will slide out so just letting you know that they do just sit on these pins that are made into the bowl. So we're gonna have to remove the pin that holds this flow arm. And one way to test it too, you wanna make sure that this is flat. So this is flat with this. So if this was downhill or uphill, that means it's not gonna set your height of your bowl. So make sure that is correct. If it was uphill or downhill, you're just gonna bend that small little tab right there uh, to allow it to be flat. So you, ours is set perfect right out of the box. So we do have to use a pick. You can see one side of that pin uh, is where you can slide it through. The other side has like a hat on it. So we do have to push this pin this way out of this. So once we push that pin out, we can raise this float up and then we can unthread this needle and seat out of its pocket. We use a nine mil socket. Now this does have a washer on the actual needle and seat as well as under this little platform. So we wanna keep the one under the platform and make sure we remove the washer off of this and put it on our new needle and seat and this is i don't know if you can see that but this is a 3.3 that's stock in there and we're swapping it down to a 1.5 i'm gonna pull that washer off slide it on there it's as simple as just threading it back in there and then we have upgraded this for fuel pressure now, I believe these will work in the 24 millimeters as well. There we go. Now we can just slide our pin back in. Now we can recheck, make sure our float level is good. It's a hair bit downhill. So I'm gonna actually bend this prong down a little bit. Now we have it sitting 
pretty level and we can put our bowl back on and we are done. Now it's as simple as that to make our 34 millimeter and like I said I'm pretty sure this is the same exact part for a 24 millimeter Makuni. Uh, I'll have to check and see, but this part is linked down below. It's like 5 to $7, something around that. And I always keep these, of course, because you never know when you might have a needle and seat go bad on a standard gravity-fed setup. Uh, one other thing we'll do later, but I'm not going to do right now, is we also have the kit linked down below so you can swap this choke lever out to a cable-driven setup so we can put a uh, choke in the dashboard and start this go-kart without ever having to mess with the back We can set in the cabin and start it So we can install this back on the go-kart and get our fuel pump installed All right, so that last clip you saw me building a battery box. Now, there's not a lot of room on this since we did dual gas tanks and we have that huge 625. Uh, so we're having to come up with something a little different to a uh, different spot to put our battery. So I end up having to go with a smaller battery um, and we've located it under the dash. So you can take out a bolt and pull the battery out from inside so we can sheet metal all of this later. And I do have to cap off, this was the old frame ends that went to the old row cage. But before powder coat, we'll cap this off, put some plate steel or ABS plastic over this, and we still have to build a dashboard set up to hide all of our fuse box. And we have a lot of wires running under here that aren't hooked up. We're waiting for our uh, gauge set up from Go Power Sports, as well as some lights to indicate like high, low, reverse, and neutral. Now it's time to try this thing out, take it on this first ride. A few moments later. Uh, so the last thing you seen me doing was building the battery box. So everything's running good. It probably needs jetted properly, but we just like everything. Yeah, it is rope my deuce. It needs jetted. Bad. It's, <laughs> it's rich and then lean. <laughs> it's it's uh, both <laughs> at the same time. So it's everything's ready to ride. Nothing is finalized. Like this is just ready to do a good test drive. See if we have any like flexing in that diff mount, and that should be it. We bled the brakes. Uh, we got the shifter hooked up. I do believe low gear is tore out of this differential. I think the, the dogs are, you know, it's like got three dogs on it that slides in and engages the low gear. Pretty sure they're war or broke. So good thing is there's parts for this pulley super cheap when it's at powder coat. I'll fix that. We won't need low gear today. We will not. If you'll choke me, I'll tell you, let's get her fired up. Like <laughs> I said, it's not. Like, <laughs> I'm not just going to I told him to choke me. We are having a meetup at Turkey Bay. You can find all this information out on rbgcarts.com slash events. <sighs> if you're ever wondering if we're doing any kind of events, that's where you go. rbgcarts.com slash events. And I think it's the 28th through the 30th of April of this year. Um, 
we'll we'll host like one ride like people can ride with us but make sure you bring something that's capable enough um because let me tell you i don't want to be working on your stuff but uh we'll tell you but um these trails are uh, much easier than wind rock yeah it's one of the best off-road trails i've ever been on we have a video coming out very soon of our ride on the talon even if you had a yurf dog you could do these trails super easy you can go around the rough stuff uh really good time hope to see you out there we're going to be out there for a few days there's a town close by if you don't have camping gear and don't want to camp you can stay in a hotel but uh we'll be there with this uh the talon as well is my supercharged buggy and most likely lonnie's deuce will be there hopefully yeah i don't see why it wouldn't be so uh lonnie will be hauling some vehicles we'll be hauling some vehicles it's gonna be a good time come hang out with us. but for now we riding this all right take the choke off i did He's not ready. Okay, so she drank a half of, uh, what is this, a quart? It took a half a quart, this is a brand new bottle, it took a half a quart of dip foot. It was empty. Uh, I never drained it, but I think it drained itself when I had it off four wheelers sitting on the side. That's not bad. It didn't hurt nothing though. What we're gonna watch is I'm gonna rev through it. Uh, we're on jack stands and stuff. Ronnie just in craze. Yeah, because the front end wants to be afraid it might lean back. You know, of course, we want as the RPMs go, we want this to go up and the back one to separate and the belt go up into it. Because if this is keeping this from happening, that could be causing our bog. But it was like bogging, like we you put on a brake. It was really weird. A ragged out four-wheeler so there's most likely going to be some things we got to repair in that differential but everything's cheap but oh man it has a ton <laughs> <laughs> it is so noisy moving like that. <laughs> it said if you ever want to hear the most annoying sound in the world roll a jack across gravels you know I was like, oh, I'm about to kick the ball I thought it was gravel <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Go on, <laughs>
so our oil catch can is oozing out oil um which is a normal thing this is the same problem we have with the boosted 670 uh it just got too much like it's not blow by it's where they put this i need to open up this metal piece right here and you can put screen in here to block see this port is ran off of this and it runs over to this catch can so we can block a lot of that from there and also we can tie into the valve cover help balance everything out and get that down but man she rips it's though a ripper. if you stay up the hill and a couple of the turns the mm -hmm. ruts are so deep it drags with two grown men in it yeah with aubrey it'll probably be perfect but if you stay out of the ruts and just kind of ride them yeah it'll go it needs so it only has 22s on it these are fat tires but they're still just 22s we have 26s all the way around i think these are 21s on front so oh, we're going to yeah, be going tiny. up yeah i mean that's uh you got a half the height difference but that's two and a half inches of lift we're going to get just out of that with, so with you sitting on it before i even got in it literally like right now you maybe got five and a half six inches it was like three yeah this is stock ground clearance what this would have before the independent suspension oh you never slid the seat back no wonder i was so far up i was like i was like good gosh this thing ain't comfortable over here that fixed the diff i guess the diff was just getting hot and binding which yeah. is very bad for it so hopefully i mean luckily we came back and fixed that but uh she's a success i can let aubrey drive this a little bit the chain will need tensioned just a hair after we break it in this chain doesn't stretch much it's o-ring motocross chain so it uh good stuff so huge success yeah yeah, it's going to be a sweet buggy for Aubrey. Transmission works perfect. It's going to need a little bit of fine-tuning on the adjustment just so you don't get that grinding. Yeah. Every once in a while, it wants to kick out of gear. Like when you first engage it. Once you're in, though, she went. Fill the chain. How much slot do we have on the bottom side? Yeah, it's it stretched some. Or the diff's moved, either one. I don't know which one. The huge tires success. will be a huge upgrade next. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're spinning nonstop yeah like uh, so i was getting mud thrown all over me yeah so with those aggressive tires and going up bigger tire size we'll lose a little low end but i think it'll balance itself out to be a freaking this is a bad little cart for sure it and, felt funner than the deuce if it oh, had yeah. the deuce's tires on it to where you had the clearance because we were dragging quite a bit yeah i don't know if you can see that on the camera you can probably hear it there's a few times oh i could feel it. it yeah for sure all right guys so the candy car is freaking sweet those that go power sports rear setup that uh trailing arms those shocks and everything worked amazing like me and lonnie together that's quite a bit of weight in that car and we never like felt uncomfortable hitting bumps really hard the thing absorbs the uh, the bumps like crazy so i highly recommend if you don't want to fabricate uh, these trailing arms these rear shocks uh, go power sports can get you the spool but they don't keep it in stock because i'm sure they don't sell a lot of them but like i said i'm hoping to get them to stock a handful of them because i'm telling you guys you can throw this on a cart in a day we modified them with some heim joints and uh just so we could get adjustment out of them because you got to think when these carts with this independent rear suspension comes out of the factory they're set at what they're set at uh but huge success that uh we got to tune out that 34 millimeter mccuni and uh it is rich right now we need to lean it out and also check the idle circuit just make sure everything's tuned in and then adjust the shifter a little bit sometimes it want to kit when you go from like reverse to drive and go to take off it will kick out of gear but that's just some fine tuning in the cable so make sure to check out the links in the video description you can find all the suspension parts all the shocks from go power sports uh, a ton of stuff is located down there and the parts on that engine this thing's going to be a certified ripper next episode we're going to be throwing a set of 26 inch tires and uh probably tuning that lower pulley it definitely needs a heavier spring in it what we was finding out with that lower pulley is it's revving to its max rpm too fast so it, it needs a heavier spring in it to to hold that belt from riding up so quickly so we'll get that tuned out uh very soon we'll order some springs to play with and uh but yeah let us know what you think about this candy car it is a certified little side by side uh aubrey's gonna have a blast we'll get the high or the low fix in it uh, very soon. But yeah, make sure to check out those links in the video description. They do help us to continue to do these videos. Massive shout out to Go Power Sports for the rear suspension setup on this. Uh, really turned out super nice. I can't wait till she gets to ride it and enjoy it. And this will be at our Turkey Bay meetup. So uh, hopefully powder coat and everything. We have enough time to do that uh, because we just need to fabricate like a dashboard setup and a few little things. Uh, Go Power Sports actually has this gauge set up uh, shown on screen and they was out of stock when we was building this but we're going to put this in this cart and show you guys how to install this and you'll have a, a speedometer it has 
Uh, it'll tell you your head temperature, all types of stuff. It's a pretty sweet little thing they use on race carts. We're going to use it on this buggy just as an information center so we have a full working dashboard. So let us know what you think of this build and uh, leave us a comment down below. Like the video, share it, and subscribe if you haven't. We love you guys and thank you so much for supporting us. We'll see you on the next one. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.